In this real-life case study, ZoneFox was able to help a business that historically had a reactive security posture. Prior to working with ZoneFox, they had no monitoring or alerting capabilities in place protecting the critical data on their systems. With ZoneFox, they were able to detect anomalous activity that led to the identification of a staff member who, in the days after tendering his resignation, was actively attempting to steal valuable intellectual property to take to his new employer, a competitor. In this video, Matt and Darren will demonstrate how ZoneFox helped the organization conduct a forensic audit, providing evidence that a data theft was indeed in progress and giving them the opportunity to prevent the employee from leaking next-gen designs and other critical data. Hi, my name's Matt. I'm Chief Technology Officer at ZoneFox, and I've got Darren Hart with me, one of my senior software engineers. Hi there. Today, we're going to take you through a forensic search. This is based on a case study that we've got up on the website. And this is from an engineering firm we're working with where ZoneFox detected and was able to help them prevent a loss of a large amount of confidential data and intellectual property. What we're going to do today, and with Darren's help, is walk you through the sort of process you'd go through on ZoneFox if you had a suspicion about a person and you wanted to investigate in some forensic detail what they had been up to. So Darren, if I were to come to you and say Bob, for example, um, was leaving the company, mm -hmm. he's a senior software engineer, much like yourself, and he's going to join one of this company's competitors, how would I go about finding out what Bob's been doing? Yeah, so it's really important that you find an epicenter, first mm -hmm. of all. So Bob leaving is the start of your, your forensic search essentially. Um, so the first thing you'd want to do is probably head on to alerts and see if he's, he's triggered anything, any of your pre-configured rules or rules that you've come up with uh, in the past um, little while, um, to, to see if he's done anything recently, Okay. Um, essentially. So I'm, I'm looking at this and uh, as Chief Information Security at this company, uh, I can see there's nothing particularly there that's concerning me. Yeah. So he hasn't triggered any real-time alerts mm -hmm. from ZoneFox, but how can I find out more of the granular detail about what he's been up to? Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, so the first thing that you want to do is probably go go to search, um, and you can start typing. So it's hooked up to Active Directory. We can type in first, last name, email address even, um, and it'll point you towards the correct um, uh, user that you okay. want to go to. So, so here we type Bob, and I can see it's gone away to Active Directory, and it's pulled back the Active Directory user account uh, for Bob, so we know who he is. So if I click on that, and then do a search, yep. so what, what am I seeing on this screen, Darren? Um, so this is your typical search screen. We have any alerts that Bob's fired um, since we started recording information from him, um, and any of the events. Um, the events are important because it gives a timeline. Um, so the past week, the past month, since we recorded, you have everything there okay. ready. Um, so if you haven't got any rules set up, we can still look at the events, and that's what's important with a forensic search. Okay, I understand. So, so here we're seeing uh, lots of alerts being triggered, but in a system where we hadn't set up those alerts, mm -hmm. I could click on events and see the very granular yeah. details? Yeah. Okay. So where would I go from here if I wanted to find out more about what Bob's been up to? Yeah, so at the top of the search, you can see we have a, a user profile overlay, um, essentially. So once we dive into that, you can see this is Bob's specific user profile. Okay. So this is pulling together all the information about Bob on the system. Yeah. Okay, so I can see the map up here on the left, and that tells me that Bob's uh, in the United States and the IP address he's on. Mm -hmm. So that's the only location he's been recorded on? Uh, yeah, so that looks like that's where he's based at okay. the minute. Um, but wherever Bob logs in, so whichever machine, whether it's in Europe, Britain, America, um, it'll send up its IP address with, with the login, so we'll be able to tell where Bob's logged in, okay. essentially. So tell me about, it says here, unapproved applications. So what's an unapproved application? Um, so in ZoneFox's terms, this is where you set up what you want the company to use or what they're allowed or not allowed to use, essentially. So an unapproved application is where you've decided uh, users or employees are not allowed to use this application and we'll report on any application that you, you, want, us to, you want to tell us about, okay. essentially. And from here, I can whitelist an application, which means it's accepted across the organization? Yeah, yeah that's right. OK. So if I whitelist it, it will never appear in anybody's uh, unapproved applications list again? Yep, that's correct. OK, that's great. So here, I can see that Bob's installed uh, various pieces of software. Now, with my 
chief information security officer's hat on. I don't like the fact that Bob's installed a backup program. Yeah, yeah that's, um, right. that's obviously could be used to collect data as it mm -hmm. was in our white paper um, before stealing it and taking it away from the organization. Yeah. So is there any way I can find out what he was backing up? Uh, yes, so with Zonefox search or with, with any kind of um, piece, uh, precise piece of information like this, um, you can load up a context menu. So mm -hmm. if you right click, we can whitelist it as you were saying earlier, or we can just go ahead and search on that actual application name. Okay, so I can see there, um, there's uh, no alerts. Uh, f for events, I can see, okay, so there's lots of files being um, touched by this particular backup program. Yeah. Okay, I understand. So I've, I'm already beginning to understand exactly which files he's backed up, mm -hmm. and I could see this complete list by clicking more. Yeah. Okay, now if I want to find out maybe where this document went, can I search for that? Uh, yes, so um, the, the search is very powerful, as I was saying. Um, so you can put in part of a, a, a name of a file or a name of an application. Um, so for example, 2015 marketing, and just search on that, and it'll find anything to do with it. So any applications that's touched a file called that or an application that's used that, um, you'll get all the information. Okay, so uh, that's great. So I, I can see here that in this instance, Bob's been um, copying this file using Explorer to mm -hmm. a network device, which means that um, he could be collecting all that data together to put on, uh, for example, upload to the cloud. Yeah or put on a, on a removable drive. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Now, zone faults, I know it can protect from upload to the cloud and removable drive use, usage and warn you about that. Mm -hmm. But if I wanted, for example, to be alerted about this in the future, what we've looked at so far is the history. Yeah. We've seen what has happened. How can I create a rule from here to alert me in real time? Uh, yes, yeah, so any event that's generated by by Zone Fox, um, you've got a button just at the top right, which is create rule, um, and that'll take the event and it'll create a rule from it. And then you can edit the rule, you can rename it, you can give it a better description, um, you can enable it, disable it, um, and you can go through that sort of process. Okay, so for example, this is specific to this user, so I may not wish uh, Bob to, to be uh, the only person who triggers this alert. So mm -hmm. I could say, for example, I could turn off the filter by user. Yeah. And then I might want to say something like, I've got a strategy group mm -hmm. in Active Directory. Yeah. And it's okay for them to um, access those documents in that folder. But I might want to be alerted if anyone out with the strategy group yeah. uh, comes along and accesses that. So would I do that through groups? Uh, yeah, so if you edit and then filter by user groups, you have access to all your Active Directory groups in here. Okay, so that's great. So if I search for strategy, yep and then hit monitor all but these groups? Yeah, that's right, so that'll create an exclusion. Okay, so here I can see I've excluded the groups from this alert, so if I would save this rule, mm -hmm. then if that series of events happened again, and if anybody out with the strategy group were to access those folders or files, we'd get a real-time alert. Yeah, that's right, and you can even go one further by modifying the resource string, so if you just want to know if someone's backed up to a network file share, for example, um, it's always appended with, uh, prepended with a NFS, okay. um, so you can even put that in the rule and you'll be alerted on whenever something happens with NFS. Okay, so I think what, what we've seen is ZoneFox, the zero configuration agent, which has recorded all user activity, it's allowed us to see what's going on, have a look at a specific user and look at their forensic history and dig into their particular activities and behaviours. And then we've been able to very, very easily set up a rule to alert us in real time about user activity going forward should that type of behaviour be seen elsewhere within the organisation. So thank you, Darren. If you'd like to find out more about the case study we were talking about or about ZoneFox, or if you'd like to talk to us about a trial, then please go to our website, zonefox.com. Thank you very much. Thank you.